welcome to Pocket of Inspiration where we create better versions of ourselves. In this episode, we have the lovely Miss Kathy Hughes. She is the Minister of Public Telecommunication. Miss, thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, I've seen you throughout the years. You've taken on different roles. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know what do you believe is your purpose in life and how you able to align your purpose with the different career paths you've taken thus far? Well, I think that my purpose in life probably was to raise a voice mm -hmm. and to give a voice to several situations. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed to have uh, parents. One was involved in uh, the arts and was an actress in addition to her full-time job mm -hmm. and then my father came from a broadcasting background so I think that gave me and of course I did at university in Jamaica um, media studies I did television production so I think that gave me the uh, ability to have conversations I worked as a reporter and to speak mm -hmm. and I think when I look back on my life really my purpose has been to give a voice to several things it started off within my family structure. I come from a family where uh, my parents were divorced. They both remarried, but we were extremely lucky that uh, my parents maintained a very, very good relationship. Mm -hmm. And my step-parents also uh, were really a second mother and a second father. So from a child, I was very um, strong on speaking about the importance of family, about structures, uh, the difficulties in non-conventional families, meaning divorced families. Um, that in itself can be challenging. Mm -hmm. My family is very, very mixed in terms of people from different races. Mm -hmm. And so again, I've always felt strongly that the issue of racial tolerance uh, in families and communities in Guyana have always been important to me. Um, I grew up in Guyana, very proud of that fact, mm -hmm. and, um, and therefore I think even up to my current position as a Minister of Government, again I'm able to raise a voice. This time I speak strongly about ICT mm -hmm. and bringing the use of technology as a way of developing our country. But, um, so I think my purpose is my voice. Okay, great. And one of your voice you're trying to make is giving women a voice especially in ICT, um, but the thing is that there are not so much women in the field of ICT. Absolutely. Why is that so and do you think there's ever more need for women in ICT right now? Absolutely. I think uh, traditionally in Guyana we really have not embraced information community communication technologies, mm -hmm. ICT to the level that we should. And that's one of the mandates of my ministry. We believe that if you use technology, you can change and we can develop a lot faster. So for example, you know, instead of going down to the passport office and spending two hours, thank God it's, it's only 20 minutes nowadays, but instead of spending a lot of time um, doing different things like applying for a passport, you could do that on, online in 15, 20 minutes. Somebody that's registering a business, instead of having to go three or four different places with pieces of paper. Again, it's something in other parts of the world you can do online. Mm -hmm. So that's where the technology side comes in. Unfortunately, when we think of ICT, we think of some uh, nerds that are engineers or the, the ICT, the computer geeks we like to call them. Yes, yes. And really it is such a wide uh, area of work. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we have internationally, the UN has created an and the International Telecommunications Union and a Girls in ICT Day. But I'm trying to take it even further. We're trying to say that to young people, to especially women, that there are many, many careers in the ICT phase uh, sphere. Mm -hmm. And those careers could be in desktop publishing, it could be as an engineer, it could be in robotics where you're gonna develop a robot that in time might be able to water fields and fields of agricultural lands. Um, there's so many possibilities. And so what we're trying to do in my ministry is not just celebrate Girls in ICT Day on a specific, uh, specific day of the year, mm -hmm. but trying to start 
speaking to young girls and telling them that their careers and their opportunities. ICT, I think, is extremely good for women too because this is the day, this is a time of entrepreneurial activity. If you look at the world, all the new millionaires and billionaires are individuals that didn't go to work with the company, but created their own company mm -hmm. in their home, in their garage. And therefore, for women that have the challenges of family, that want to give equal time to an important time to rearing their children and the next generation, this is where working from home and doing ICT-related work is such a strong possibility for them. So uh, this morning, for example, in my ministry, we were networking, we had invited about uh, 15 uh, women that work in the ICT field right here in Ghana, and we were putting our heads together as to what is it that we can do. How can we go out and talk about careers? For too long in Ghana, we think if I'm looking at a, at a career, I must be a doctor or a lawyer or maybe in the media, and we're saying there's a whole gamut. So we want to work together with other women to get that information out. Okay, great. So you've worked in so-called male-dominated careers very often, you found yourself. Mm -hmm. How did you, were you able to deal with the challenges of being the only female among the males? Let me tell you, I was fortunate, as I mentioned, to have parents that focused on education. Mm -hmm. And I say to everybody that education is the key. We think of it as sounding cliche, but when you know that you can do a task, that you have a specific skill, when you have the piece of paper that people want to know that gives, that validates this, the fact that you can, that you can do that uh, task, um, that uh, to me gives you the confidence to be able to operate. So I was lucky that from a long time, going back many years in school, I spent a lot of time studying. Education was important. My parents said to me, you got to be able to be have a, a degree, be able to look after yourself, to get a good job, and to be able to not have to depend on anybody. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I invested in education. I'm trained in media skills and reporting. Funny enough, in, uh, in the late 1980s, I worked in a place called College Station, Texas. And I worked as a cameraman. And I remember going to, you know, what you would call a hick town in Texas. And I was going to shoot the commercial. There I was taking out the tripod, just as you were doing, and the camera. And I remember the, the man at the car dealership that we were shooting the commercial for was saying, uh, you know, who is it that's going to be shooting my commercial? And I had to very politely say, yeah, I'm the, I'm the cameraman. But again, because I know I can do it, because I've done it and I've been trained to do it, that gave me the confidence. Um, jump straight forward to my present position. It was just a couple of months ago I discovered that I'm actually the only female ICT minister within the Caribbean region at this point in time. I was very happy uh, the other day to meet the minister for ICT in Kenya is actually a, a woman. So that's good to know. But again, uh, my career has been one where I have had tremendous experience in the field. I've been able, the areas that I didn't know of, mm -hmm. I've been able to read up on. I've been able to go to conferences. I've been able to participate in training. So education and training and learning always happens, and I'm still doing some now, so that I can be the best that I can be in this current position. Okay. So, um, and you know, be working in the media, having to report, having to speak to last group, large groups of people, gives you a confidence to be able to talk in public situations, which is a lot of what I have to do now. Okay, awesome. So for girls who might be interested in the field of ICT, what would you say or encourage them with the potential it has, like the benefit of having a technical background? Well, I actually believe, and if you look at the world, all the new careers and the emerging industries are in the information communication technology field. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the birth of the internet, the fact that today now, even the UN has, has listed access to the internet 
as one of the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. And why they've done that is because once you can access the internet, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're selling any kind of product, if you're selling training, if you're a professional in any way, the internet allows you a billion dollar market. So before in Ghana, if I wanted to sell pepper sauce, you know, I could only sell it to a few people in Georgetown mm -hmm. or in Burbese or in the Rupanunye or wherever. If I'm making pepper sauce today as a business, I can develop a Facebook page and I could be exporting and shipping my pepper sauce to any part of the world. And believe it or not, there are companies and there are young people especially doing that in Guyana here today. And so we want to spread more and more that that is the way of the future. If you look at the telecommunications industry, we went from depending on landlines at home. In the US now, nobody, people are not applying for landlines anymore for their homes because everybody has a smartphone. And on that smartphone, you can find out if you're sick and you need to think, uh, start working out and researching what the ailment might be. If you want to book an appointment with a doctor, if you want to call a taxi, um, anything you want to do now, people are doing it on their phones, on their tablets, on their laptops. And therefore, there are loads of services. The development of apps. Uh, we know that because several of us would download apps on our phones. Um, we have Google Maps, we have apps that tell us if I get lost, where I should drive to get to a particular point. There are apps, including local apps, that tell you what's showing at the cinemas tonight. There are apps that tell you what restaurants exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was very involved with the launching of Directory GY, which um, the Ministry of Tourism last year commissioned and, uh, and worked very closely with those young entrepreneurs on. And Directory GY will tell you how to find a particular place. It will give you a list of all the restaurants, the menus, the costs. It'll give you supermarkets, what's on sale, what the selling price is today. So in each of those, whether you're a web developer, whether you're an engineer that's going to design something, whether you're just um, do it, whether you're doing graphic art, uh, all those are skills and products that you that there's going to be a market for. I mentioned, for example, that in Guyana, so many of our ministries have decades and decades and decades of paper records. And therefore, if you're thinking of digitizing, all the ministries, all our offices, even private sector companies, have to start looking at an efficient way of documenting and saving that information. Yes, uh, yeah, and so just think of all the young people that once they can come out of school with some ICT, basic ICT skills, once they can go to one of the technical training institutions and learn the basics of maneuvering around a computer, mm -hmm. then the sky is the limit because all the jobs of the future are going to be in that area. I can see that private sector companies in the next two years are going to be recognizing, oh my goodness, if I'm an agricultural company, and I grow tomatoes, what are the technology-based developments mm -hmm. that can enhance the traditional ways of growing tomatoes? And that's why I say, for example, there might be a robot that might be watering those tomato plants as opposed to a person standing up with a hose as we did long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know about hydroponics yes. and other new ways of agriculture. And I'm mentioning agriculture because, again, I think we're not thinking sufficiently in that area as a country. And there are new innovative ways of doing agriculture. We're not talking about you got to go out in the field and you got to get the fork and you got to dig up. Because I know a lot of young people think, I'm not interested in agriculture if it's that old fashioned way. But there are new areas and new developments. Great. That's so refreshing to hear. So, for instance, if a young woman wants to develop a career in ICT, mm -hmm. she finished secondary school, what is her next step? What are resources available for her to really achieve her goal? If, for instance, she wants to become a coder, mm -hmm. and so on, what 
resources are available? Well, we are very fortunate that the University of Guyana mm -hmm. um, is continuing to expand their computer and their ICT department. And again, just recently I met the head of the ICT department, and so she's going to be doing some programs also, specifically to target girls. But I would say that if you come out of high school and you haven't, you're not quite sure, you haven't decided that you want to go to university to do ICT, the technical colleges have, you know, and have programs where you can do training in ICT. Mm -hmm. And then as you know, we have a lot of private sector business, the business school, global technology, um, e-networks, there are loads of places that actually provide training. And therefore, I would say that to any young person, take the opportunity to find a computer, a center that provides computer training. By the end of this year, we are going to, we would have completed our center for excellence. The center of excellence is going to be located on the university campus. Mm -hmm. We've gotten funding from the Indian government to set it up. And, um, and the government of Guyana is also providing funding. And the Center of Excellence is going to be a place where you will be able to come to the center and uh, to be able to sign up for a range of courses and training that is a pre-university level. And then, of course, as I mentioned, if you know that this is the industry that you want to get into, the career path that you want to explore, then I would encourage you to go to the University of, the, of, of uh, Guyana. They have a range of programs. And of course, when it comes to postgraduate training, I was about to mention the University of the West Indies, only because it's a university that I went to. There are campuses in Trinidad, Barbados, and Jamaica, and they have very good online courses. The other thing too, is that a lot of this training you don't have to go into a physical space. Because, for instance, the person in the interior, right, a girl right, in the interior wants to do ICT, she could do some training, training online, 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 and that's one of the things that we're promoting within the ministry. We are creating ICT hubs mm -hmm. where there there's going to be free internet access in communities. We'd like to be able to say that in each region, you're probably going to have at least four or five ICT hubs where members of a community can go and use the internet free of charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of that, and then of course we are also working on providing, we've provided free internet access to now it's about 102 high schools and educational institutions. The Guyana School of Agriculture, the Technical Colleges, um, you know, the three campuses of UG. And again, what we're trying to do is to make the internet available. Because we're saying that once communities and individuals have ex access to the internet, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. You could learn online. There are actually free courses online. And so in the next coming months, we are going to be speaking more. In addition, the ministry at some of these ICT hubs are actually going to be providing training we want to come out to those communities for the older uh, people, the older citizens, maybe even the pensioners who didn't have an opportunity to learn all the new technologies. We want to be able to say, come twice a week to this community center mm -hmm. and we're going to teach you the basics. So it is a, it, it's an exciting time. Awesome. So I believe you have some various events that hope, would have hopes of sensitizing the nation or young people about the opportunities of ICT, mm -hmm. probably to talk some sure. about that. Sure. Uh, we've been working a lot with the um, ICT community. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some people will know that last year we held a hackathon, mm -hmm. which of course is really targeting the real ICT, the computer geeks. Because what they were doing is that they had 48 hours to develop an app. And the company that actually won that app, that created uh, an app that won was uh, Eldon Marx's company and they're creating, yeah, Vision 75, I think it's called. And they're actually going to start on the 4th of August. They're going to be doing a DevX, which is really a development exhibition. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to be located out at um, Gifflin Mall, which I think is a wonderful uh, location. And that's where you're going to have uh, speakers from different parts of the Caribbean talking about this. I'm hoping too that we can participate and maybe do something specifically for girls in ICT, um, giving, presenting information on a range of careers. Mm -hmm. So that uh, development exhibition, DevEx, is going to take place during August. Um, we are actually at the ministry going to be doing a code fest also. And that is going to uh, take place um, towards in sometime in August, sorry, in October. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we hope to do another hackathon sometime in November. But in between, these are specific events. And I know later on your program, there's going to be someone that's going to be talking specifically and giving the inner details on DevEx. Yes. So as a woman, you're challenged with managing your first career. Somebody might have different jobs and all that. Plus, you mm -hmm. have to manage your home oh. and all that. Yes. So how do a woman able to manage all of that, especially for girls? I have experienced it with myself. Um, when it comes to ICT arena, like working in ICT, certain tasks takes a lot of time to get done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it really could be difficult to manage your what you want to do, absolutely. your mission, and also you have the demands of home. Uh, absolutely. How do you really manage it's, that? You know, it takes for a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. You have to be organized as a woman. Um, and I'll, I'll give you, you know, a classic example. Last, um, last weekend, um, my, uh, I have a housekeeper that comes a couple of days a week and she had red eye. Mm -hmm. So she was missing for about two weeks. So sure enough, as all women do, on Saturday I got up, I threw in some laundry in the wash. I had to jump, write my list because I knew I didn't have enough time to go to the supermarket and wander around. So I spent the first two hours of the morning thinking of all the things I had to do, write my list. I then jumped in the car, drove to the supermarket, ran around the supermarket and that's something I meet people that say, oh my gosh, you're driving yourself? Yes, I do all of those things, you know. And then later on in the day, I put uh, a chicken in the oven. I did a whole chicken because I know I could cut off parts of the chicken and that's one meal and then the next day you could strip the chicken and make fried rice and, and chow mein. Yeah. What I'm trying to show you is that at all levels, mm -hmm. all women, including myself, have to be organized and have to plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I mentioned, you know, I didn't even mention having smaller kids. I don't have smaller kids in the house. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you also have little people to, to look after or teenagers. I think what's important too, and this is where I speak to the men and to families, when you have that family support, it's, it's a big help. And it's important because I want men to recognize that if you can build up the women in your life, the family unit becomes better. You become a better man. And you, as a woman, become a better woman, a better parent. It has to be done together. And I was very, very fortunate that I had great uh, role models in my parents. Uh, my husband is an excellent role model. Never once has my husband said to me, Kathy, will be eaten. Mm -hmm. I know there are horror stories of women that, unless they get home in time to cook, the man will get vexed. Folks, that is not the world of today, you know? so. My husband will know that I got an interview like I did this morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. He gets up and he starts funding. He gets breakfast. And he will bring me some breakfast. And tomorrow he might be working on a case. Uh, I'm going to go and get some porridge for both of us. So that's how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way I think that you can really both be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about purpose, you know, which is how you started this interview. Each of us has a purpose. And we need to have the peace of mind in our family environment. And that is an environment that is free of domestic violence, physical, mental, abusive language. Mm -hmm. You know, 
we have to be able to we get the best if we big up each other you know so I I have been able to do all I've been able to do because my mother thought I was the best thing from it since sliced bread to the point where I used to be embarrassed I used to say oh god mommy no please she would go somewhere and before I had this position She'd be, oh, this is my daughter, Kathy, and she does this and she does that. And you'd be like <laughs> hanging your head in shame, you know. And then my dad, very supportive man, mm -hmm. very strong, as I mentioned, on education, but would say, stop complaining. They got men out there that think women can't do the job. You know you can do the job. Don't complain. Go out and quietly do it. When you do it, you show you can do it. And I think that's what's happening in the world today when it comes to women. Mm -hmm. More women are graduating from university. More women are doing better at high school. To the point where now we're having to look at the men. Because the men are now an issue. Hmm. And so we have to work with our men. But the women are, are, are very strong. And I think many of them are strong because they've had dads, uncles, grandfathers, fathers that have been there. And that have supported them and that's very very important it's very important because i know my dad has made a really vast in difference in my life to really push for a best for us to get a best education mm -hmm. so fathers and that's another thing too a lot of i know this probably for more traditional homes yeah the fathers are, are not so willing to back their girl child to go to school and go higher. Yes. So probably go marry, like them marry earlier. Yes. On, no. And all of that. Yep. And and you know, I say to men that daughters are so special. You have a daughter for the rest of your life, because a daughter will always look out for dad. When he gets the eighth and ninth and whatever, she's going to be there. I'm not saying that the guys are, but daughters have a special relationship with their dads. And you know, dads, it's so important to have that relationship with your daughter because in re retrospect, we learn how to socialize with men based on how our parents, or how our dads uh, treated us. And when it came, comes to education, I grew up from a very small age with my dad bringing me the newspaper. And he would say, have you read the newspaper today? You know, and he would give it to me. Mm -hmm. The other thing he would do is magazines. In those days, we didn't have the internet. So he would have a subscription to Newsweek. And I remember dad would read the Newsweek and then he would come to me, can't look the Newsweek. They got an interesting article on whatever, whatever. Let's talk about it. And you know, when I look back on my life, that's where I was able to start to simulate and get involved in things happening in the world in my own community and where i lived because dad would say to me girl you see what happened here what do you think about that what do you think they should do and so you automatically get involved and this is where sometimes we underestimate how important it is to be a responsible citizen you know we sit down and complain that this ain't working and that ain't working and we don't realize that if 10 people went to the palms once a month, it would make such a big difference on the, on the residents that are there. That in some, if there's a young woman who has challenges that has had a child at age 14, that you don't turn up your nose and scorn them. But you take a minute to say, how are you doing? How can I help? Can I help you go? go back to school. If you're somebody that is more comfortable, you know, can you volunteer to pay for that woman to do a course? So before our last question, what do you think is the most important core value for creating the best version of yourself? I would say the most important uh, core value, I would say two, mm. honesty and integrity. Mm. Honesty because you have to be, when you're honest with yourself, then you know how hard you have to work mm -hmm. to be yourself, to be better, to be a better person. And we all start out at one level and we have all these opportunities. How can I use those opportunities to be the best that I can be? Regardless of where I am in society or what I've been given. Because some people have been given a lot more 
than others just by who their parents are, where they've been born, etc. So honesty is very, very important. Honesty also allows you to be respected and to give the kind of vibes. I'm very in tune with my vibes and a lot of my life I have gotten from my spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have integrity, it's a natural thing. When people meet you, they know you are a person, you're an honest person and a person of integrity. And believe it or not, those two qualities opens many can open many doors. When somebody meets you and they see that you are that type of person and they get the right vibe from you, then when the opportunity arises, out of the blue you will get a call. And I've got so many of those in my life. Oh, Kathy, I met you only once, but guess what? I work with an international agency and there's this great conference overseas. Would you be interested in going? And then I get that opportunity that I would never have had. And that opportunity trains me and builds me up and makes me, you know, and influences my life in the years to come. So those are the kinds of values that sometimes in today's world we want to say, oh Lord, let me go and do a little hustle. Um, you know, it's not really illegal if I'm a policeman and I ask for a bribe, everybody doing it. And don't let me pay my taxes because everybody doing it. It comes, it reflects on you and your inner self. And we got to get to the stage where we're big enough and honest enough to do the right thing. Because you know what's sad? We go abroad and then we want to know how come all those agencies and organizations work. Because the individual, the citizen, takes a stand mm -hmm. and does what they have to do. Take it upon ourselves a responsibility to maintain standards. Exactly, exactly. And I'm happy that we have a renewal of that in Ghana. I'm so excited, you know. Uh, five years ago, Guyanese people came to visit Ghana mm. and they would say to me, my family, friends, oh my God, look at the garbage all over the place. And you would be ashamed. And now I went on a trip to Estonia. And it, it was lovely to see, because of course when you travel, you see how clean everywhere else is. And I looked in Estonia and I thought, oh my God, these roads are clean. And guess what? Yeah, we got a lot of roads that are just as clean. You know, so you feel a pride. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So, um, Kathy, I must thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to pick your mind and to share some knowledge with us. And... So, Mr. Kathy, for those who might have interest in the ITC field or would like to know more about your ministry, where can they reach? Is there a website that they can log on to? Sure. The website is www.mopt.gov.gy. And we have a whole host of information on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, if they want to come in and speak to us or speak to anybody, we're located at 205 Camp Street in Georgetown. Um, it's actually opposite Popeyes. It's also next door to Cold Grain Pool. And it's also just before Georgetown Club. So we're very central. And just come in and ask for any bit of information. If I'm here, you know, sure, I, I'm available. I'd love to, to meet and speak with you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And, you know, I want to thank you. Because you are a young ICT uh, entrepreneur. Your uh, blog, your YouTube ta channel are great and innovative ways of sharing information and also of uh, raising awareness and discussion. So thank you for all the good work you do in ICT. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank all you. right. This has come to the end of our episode. If you found this information very vital please subscribe to my channel if you have any questions please leave it in the comments below remember this was pocket of inspiration stay true to yourself and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs> okay.